Good morning, brothers and sisters. I greet you once again in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm coming to you from Edmonton Impact Gospel Ministries, and it's so nice of you that you could join us yet another time. All praise and honor and glory to God who has given us a new day to worship him and to bless others. It is a day we have set aside to join in Holy Communion or the Lord's Supper, as most of us uh, know it. I have been able to get fellowship cups to all, but I wasn't able, let me correct myself, I wasn't able to get those fellowship cups to each and every one of you. But if you do have some grape juice and, you know, unleavened bread, you know, like crackers or things like that, things that can be used uh, in this kind of setting, feel free to gather them and get ready, prepare, and if you so desire, join us, participate with us. We will do this towards the end of my presentation, so you have you have some time to gather these things. You know, so don't be too worried. I want to speak to you today about the Lord's Supper and how important it is to us. I will do this, you know, making three points in my presentation. I will talk about the great purpose of this ordinance. I will talk about the significance and the true meaning. Let's pray. Oh Father, I thank you and I bless your name. This is indeed, oh God, a special day, a special time, Lord, that I come before you, Lord. Oh God, as we prepare, Lord, to partake, oh God, that you have left uh, for us to do, God, that example, God, I pray in the name of Jesus, oh God, that we will approach, oh God, with the right spirit, Oh, Almighty God, in the right heart, I pray, Father, that we will understand what it is that we do. And God, that we will remember, oh God, that, that night of agony and groaning, Lord, the price that you have paid, oh, Almighty God, by shedding your blood, by being that lamb, that being that ultimate sacrifice, Lord, that would purchase our salvation, our redemption. Almighty God, I pray, oh Father, as we go through your words and as we, oh God, look to participate, God, may we come with the right frame of mind, Lord. Oh God, that your name will be lifted up and worshipped on our lips. Heavenly Father, bless each participant out there this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. I want to share a scripture with you from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, verses 26 to verse 29. It reads like this. Pardon me, Luke 22, verse 7 to 13. Then the day of unleavened bread came when the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare it? They asked him. Listen, he said to them. When you have entered the city, a man carrying a water jug will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters. Tell the owner of the house. The teacher asks you, where is the guest room? where I can eat the Passover with my disciples. Then he will show you a large furnished upstairs. Make the preparations there. So they went and found it, just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. Let's first look at the purpose. Jesus we know was uh, participating in this ordinance that was laid out years ago for this nation. When we look at the Son of God, he considered it important enough 
that he would set aside time to also observe what was laid out as the Passover. A lamb had to, uh, they had to get a lamb. It had to be without blemish. They had to uh, do it at a certain time of the year. This was laid out in, in remembrance of the Passover in the times, in the days, when they were delivered from Egypt, when God was about to take them out of the bondage and, and bring them to a place where they can celebrate and worship him in the freedom that God intended. The Son of God did not consider himself uh, too high, too mighty, too special to ignore the ordinances of his Father that was, that was laid out here to show how important it is to obey the instructions of Almighty God. He showed how important it was. It stresses the need to remember the Lord's death. You see, this way, we, we keep in mind the price that God paid on Calvary for you and I. We can get so caught up in our everyday life. We can uh, get so caught up in celebrating our salvation and forget about who our Redeemer is. What he went through for you and I to have this liberty, to have this access to the throne of grace. When, when, it, when we realize how important it is, we would always want to remember such that he can bring us back to understand that he didn't have to do it. That we can, we can appreciate how high the price was that he paid for us. That we will understand, even when we say salvation is free, we will understand that the context we have got to be careful about because somebody paid for it. And we know it was Jesus Christ, our Lord. The purpose of it is to bring us back in memory that Jesus Jesus, the Son of God, was a gift to mankind to redeem us from our sins. It's to be kept even in the face of difficulties. Yes, brothers and sisters, we are going through rough times. We, we, we can't even have a church as we used to, as we, we desire to. But even in the face of this, we still want to remember what God, what Jesus Christ, this great Son of God had done for you and I. What he went through such that he could redeem us from our sins. We should not have difficulties in such a way that we cannot participate and remember our Lord Jesus Christ. It shows how important it is uh, of how to approach with the right attitude. Jesus Christ told his disciples when it came to that time, he told them to go in to a certain place, into Jerusalem. When the day of unleavened bread came, when the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed, Jesus sent Peter and John say, go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. It shows that we have to give it thought. We got to reflect. It is special, so we prepare for it. Where do you want us to prepare it? They ask. Because of the importance of it, Jesus demonstrated uh, a deeper, a deeper meaning of it. How much it should mean to us such that we pay such attention to how we prepare. Jesus himself made preparation ahead of time. He said, listen, he said to them, 
when you have entered the city, a man carrying a water jug will meet you. Those are, those are fine details. That, that sounds like somebody has made preparation ahead of time for this special occasion. Preparing for it is important as shown by our Lord. He stresses also the need for cautious preparation. The details, the details that Jesus provided, a special room, a certain man that he must have had some agreement with. Uh, we could say it was spiritually done. I don't know. But somewhere along the line, Jesus had made arrangement for this very day. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. So we got to prepare according to the example set by Jesus Christ. It's that important. The purpose we must not forget. How significant it is. What is the significance of it? In Luke 22, 15 to 18, it says, Then he said to them, I have fervently desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you, from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. We see here the significance. One point of it is that it is tied to the Lord's death. Jesus himself had a deep feeling, a burning feeling in him. I have fervently desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. It's tied to the suffering that was going to take place. It opens our mind to pictures of a great supper. Jesus himself hinted, I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. A day to look forward to. He also, in, in, the, in, in the last part of, of, of this section of scripture, for I tell you from now on, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. It gets us thinking that there is a, a time coming. Many would argue today that we were not among the twelve sharing this supper. But it was provided such that uh, as being a part of his body, we can gather in fellowship and true communion, partake and remember our Lord's death. But he hints of a day that is coming when we will be able to sit down and sup with him. Where we will be one body together participating, partaking of this wonderful ordinance. He will not drink again, he said, until the kingdom of God comes. So it opens our minds to a picture of a great supper to look forward to. What does all this mean? What does all this mean? Jesus Christ himself brought certain things into the picture. He was the lamb without blemish. See, the Passover required a lamb, maybe from the, the, the sheep or even a goat, but it had to be without blemish. You see, in the days of, of, of the law for our sins or for the sins of the people to be forgiven, they had to, uh, animals had to be slain, blood had to be shed. 
Sacrifices had to be made. But here Jesus was about to institute or to bring about a fulfillment of that great ordinance by showing that he was the ultimate lamb. That he was the one that was spotless and without blemish. In John, St. John chapter 1 and verse 29, the next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The true meaning is that we are, we're celebrating the ultimate sacrifice of the Lamb whose blood was shed for you and I. In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 18 to 19, for you know that you were redeemed from your empty way of life, inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with precious, with the precious blood of Christ, like that of an unblemished and spotless lamb. Peter knew something about the lamb of God. He spent many days with the Lamb of God. And so when we, when we partake of the Lord's Supper, we are remembering that blemish, blemishless Lamb, that spotless Lamb of God. He was the living bread. In John chapter 6, and verse 51, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. The bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The true meaning, brothers and sisters. So when we partake, we are remembering the Lamb that was slain. The bread that came down from heaven of which we will never hunger again. Point three. He is the new covenant or testament. In Mark 14 and verse 24 he said to them this is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for many. Jesus was ushering or ushered in as we look back a new era where we did not where we no longer will need the blood of bulls and goats and sheep because the, the ultimate lamb has shed his blood once for all for you and I. Oh, the blood, the blood of Jesus that makes us white as snow. It is good for us to remember what he went through. It is good for us to remember who was the lamb, why we are able to, to have that freedom and liberty as we now have how we are able to have that hope of this great salvation that he has brought to us. It all came through because of the obedient son of Almighty God. He was the lamb. He was the bread of life. And so uh, it, it, is, it, is, it behooves us to want to celebrate to want to remember, to want to worship him in this fashion. Oh Lord, we want to remember the price that you paid. You covered our sins, Lord, and you opened the door, oh God, to, to, to have access to your throne of grace so we don't have to live our lives in bondage or in fear. To be loosened from the clutches of the wicked adversary and to be able, Father, to look up even in troublesome times, even in difficult times, Lord, and to give your praise, to be thankful and to praise your name. 
Father, we thank you for a day such as this. And God, we want to be numbered among those who reflect and remember. So Lord Jesus, we want to participate. We want to remember you, the price that you have paid. We want to remember your goodness, Lord. We want to remember how faithful you are. We want to remember, God, that even, oh God, even though how hard it was, you still did it. Even though, God, the agony was so great, Father, you still, you still allowed your son to suffer for us. And so we remember, we remember. Father, this is a day we set aside to join in Holy, Holy Communion. And God, as we, as we turn to this, may you be with us, Lord. A scripture in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 26 to 29. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sin against the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself in this way. Let him eat the bread and drink from the cup. For whoever eats and drinks without recognizing the body eats and drinks judgment unto himself. Glory, praise, and honor to God Almighty. Just before we pray, please get your fellowship cups and whatever you have to join us in communion. We, we normally have the bread first and then we drink of the fruit of the vine after. We want to do this together. You also join, join with us. Please bow your heads. We got to approach this in a reverent, uh, sincere manner. The Bible encourages us that we should not eat of it unworthily. If you know that there is any reason why you shouldn't, uh, there's still unforgiveness in your heart, sins plaguing uh, your heart, your lives. Maybe you want to talk to God uh, about them before you do partake. It is a solemn occasion and I, I do want us uh, not to trivialize it but approach it in the manner in which it was intended. It is for us to remember the Lord and the price that he paid and to celebrate his death until he comes. Let us pray. Oh dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, dear Lord, that your God Almighty, that Father in heaven, we can, we can celebrate and remember your death in this fashion, that Lord, as we, as we draw, oh God, to your virtual table here, God, we have, we have not been through this before in this fashion, but Almighty God, may you see our heart and the intention we do have this day. Father, purge us, oh God, from our iniquities and our sins, and help us, Lord God, to participate with, a, with clean hands and pure heart. Lord, purge us, oh God, from all unforgiveness, Lord, all bitterness and all anger. May your hand be upon each one, oh God, as we prepare to participate, Lord. 
We pray, O oh Father, O oh God, that the bread and the wine that we're about to have, God, may your hand be upon it. Father, bless it in whichever area, in every home. Oh God, among all your people that are getting ready to participate, Lord, may it be sanctified. Oh, Father in heaven, may it be special, Lord Jesus, for this occasion, Lord. And we pray, God, as we remember you, Lord God, that the honor, the glory will go to your name, Lord, that the praise will flow from our lips, Almighty God, and we will worship you, oh, Father, in this fashion, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We say thanks, amen, and amen. received from the Lord what I also pass unto you. On the night when he was betrayed, Lord Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. Do in remembrance of me. Let's eat.
Father in heaven, until you return, Lord, may we continue to celebrate, oh God, and remember and reflect on what you have laid out for us, Lord. To you, oh God, be all the praise, the glory, the honor, and the power. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you this morning, folks. Thank you for participating in this. This is the first time <laughs> and we trust that as we go forward and things settle down, we will again be together to join in that fellowship, holy communion, and even join in feet washing as we normally practice. May the Lord bless you, bless you and your family. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for being a part of this. May the Lord bless you throughout this week. Amen. Go with God. In the name of Jesus. Blessings.